Hello, my name is Kevin Martin for the Supplemental Instruction Series of Videos for Chem 121, and today I'm going to be discussing the periodic table. Now, the periodic table, you might think it's just randomly cobbled together, it's arbitrary, but it's actually organized in a very specific way. Now, the basic way it's organized is that each vertical piece, the, each column, is what's called a group. And that determines reactivity and all that. So all the vertical columns are the groups. And then all the horizontal rows, those are what are referred to as periods, hence periodic table, because it's organized into periods. Now, on the periodic table, you'll see that there are certain groups that are special enough to warrant their own names outside of numbering. And then we have here, this is group one, it's the alkali metals, which includes such things as sodium, potassium, lithium, and the like. And then the second group is called the alkaline earth metals, that includes calcium, magnesium, etc., and so on. Then you have this big middle section here. Those are what are called the transition elements because they are kind of transitional, because they're not really main group. They can't, they, you can't really fit certain properties to them. And then we go all the way over here, we have the halogens, the fluorine, the chlorine, iodine, bromine, etc., and so on. And then here, finally, we have the noble gases, which, are, which would be your helium, your neon, argon, krypton. Yes, it does exist, Superman's least favorite element. And then, if you notice down here, there is a special block with special periods. Here, this top one is the lanthanide series, derived from the fact that it comes after the element lanthanum. And then you have the actinides, which is, this, which is similar to the lanthanide, except it comes after actinium. And so that's the basic general structure of the periodic table. You'll go more into it later on. Now, in the center, you see a certain, uh, an example of an entry on the periodic table. This X tells you the symbol for the element, you know, like C for carbon, I for iodine, B for beryllium, what have you. This A right here is going to be your atomic number which is, you know, the, num the number that identifies it as what element it is. And then down here, you have an average atomic mass, which, in other words, it's the average mass of one atom of the element or, you know, one mole if you get into molar masses and all that. And so that is the basic structure of the periodic table. You'll be dealing more with it as time goes on. And so, yeah, there it is, periodic table.